eight enduros across the European continent have been united by one singular purpose, to find the ultimate enduro champion. But the motivation behind the eyes of each rider is rarely the same. Some are just beginning to write their story, others looking to build a legacy. The young guns are thirsty for success and the old dogs are proving they still have what it takes. For those further down the ladder, this could be the best opportunity to impress the factory teams and advance their career. For some, this is simply a calling too loud to ignore. This is the World Enduro Super Series. If a race could have split personalities, that race would be Portugal's Extreme XL Ligares. No other enduro can match it for sheer variety of environments. Combining night enduro cross, an urban prologue through the city of Porto, and a demanding hard enduro across sprawling hills and slick riverbeds. Amongst the factory riders stepping up to take on the Jekyll and Hyde of off-road racing is Wei Jung. It's always good coming back to Lagaros. I have some good memories and I have some bad, but uh, going into 2019, I've done a lot of training, a lot of work, and um, it's a new year, it's a new motivation. So I definitely, after last year, finishing in seventh, it would be awesome to crack the podium, if not the top step. Unlike most factory riders, Wade doesn't come from a trials background, traditionally seen as a stepping stone into the world of hard enduro. Nevertheless, he's risen to become one of the sport's brightest stars. He's fast and he's so strong, you know, if he gets stuck, then he just like, he's an animal, he just pulls his bike out. Wait, uh, he's a bull. Uh, <laughs> he pulls like hell. He's South African, all South Africans. For me, are a bit crazy. I think he's just strong, like physically strong, you know, like uh, that's the way he's built, like just comes strong out of the box. Well, he's, his fitness has always been there, he's always worked hard, but then he's obviously had to work hard on his technique as well. So, you know, for the trials guys, it's kind of comes more natural, but, you know, Wade's obviously had to work and he's done really well. You know, the supporters here at Lagaris are absolutely so passionate about racing and that, and it uh, definitely helps. I got a win under my belt here, so they know me a bit, so it's really awesome. They just go crazy for motorbikes and the whole town and that's got rallies and all of that going on, so they complete, yeah, motorsport fanatics. Riding for Sherco Factory Racing, Wade has achieved what so few can, the backing and support of a manufacturer. Walk around the paddock though, and you'll notice the majority of riders aren't factory pros, but a mixture of amateurs, weekend warriors, and independents. Amongst them is Norwegian privateer, Ib Andersen. A privateer is a rider that doesn't have a factory team backing him up at the races. He has to fix the things himself, get uh, friends, family to help out. And also to manage this, uh, I have to finance it myself. I will not do all of the rounds in the West Series this year. I will do four out of eight. It costs money. You have to buy airplane tickets, a hotel, a rental car, all of it, parts for the bike, and it's not easy. But if you want, you can find solutions. I think for privateers, it's quite difficult to do alone, especially if you're looking for a good result to fill your bike up and drive to the race, enter and like work on your bike and all that. It's, it's a hell of a lot of work. And um, yeah, I take my hat off to those guys that uh, go through that much effort and work and that. But I guess it's all for the, the passion and enjoyment at the end of the day. It's uh, for sure a big uh, dream to be a factory rider. They have a good setup on the bikes. They also have uh, very good uh, special parts on the bike. Uh, that's almost impossible for privateers to get. The mechanics are very professional and uh, know everything about the bike. The rider doesn't have to do things with the bike uh, in the same way as a privateer. Also, it would be nice to have a own chef that uh, just served you the food all the time. Just sit down and eat. As dusk falls, the Portuguese countryside comes alive with the sound of two-stroke for the night enduro cross. A short technical sprint in front of a devoted crowd of fans.
Night racing isn't that common. Um, it definitely makes things challenging, especially when there's ruts and the, the light shining down and you can't really see exactly where the line is. But um, you never know what's going to happen out there. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy, so many guys on the track and that. So I fell back, I think, to last. It was right on the first lap. So I just took the time back and tried to push for a fast lap time as today and tomorrow determine our start position for Sunday, the main race. What separates a factory rider from the rest of the paddock? Of course, they're the fastest guys on the best bikes. But beyond that, they get their edge from the teams backing them. A wealth of expertise and knowledge working hard to analyse and perfect every aspect of racing life. Whilst Wade Sherco factory racing might have more at their disposal than privateers and amateurs, compared to the big two of KTM and Husqvarna, they have to make do with limited resources. My support team was pretty small. Um, normally it's me and my mechanic, Bubu. We pretty much operate out of a big sprinter van. Um, for me, it's perfect, you know. Um, it's all I know and it, it works for us and it's done the job and we have been able to win races. So um, I'm very happy and comfortable with the setup we've got. We have everything we need. We are able to do everything. It's just maybe a little bit, lack a little bit of space and maybe a bit of comfort, but that's about it to get the job done. Um, it's more than enough. I think I definitely have one of the best mechanics, you know. Um, we see things from the same perspective, if I should say. Um, he makes decisions on my behalf, for example, on uh, the moose and the back tyre to see how soft it needs to be for the race and that. So I'm happy to have him in my corner. For this race in Lagares, I have brought my girlfriend, Caroline. Caroline will come to all of the races I do this year. Uh, her uh, holiday schedule is uh, uh, done uh, after the race schedule. So I'm very happy and lucky to have that help. Uh, both before and during the races, I get a lot of emotional and practical help from uh, Caroline. It's nice to have a person beside you just before you go out and you start the race uh, with your bike. It's a lot of things to think about. It's a lot of emotions. Uh, so it's nice to have a person that uh, can be there for you. Uh, it's not possible to do it without her. For privateer and pro alike, day two at Extreme Excel Lagares means one of the most unique courses on the West calendar. A prologue through the winding staircases and back alleys of Porto. At the stairs, when I had the bike straight, I could give as much gas as I want. If I was a little bit sideways, I started to make uh, stupid mistakes, but not many. And only I stopped the bike once in a very sharp turn. That's the only. The rest of it was smooth. Not fast enough, but smooth. No big mistakes. No crashing. Unfortunately, on like the second obstacle, I tossed it and made a little mistake. So I was like, oh man, what am I doing? Like, I picked it up, I didn't rush it. Um, got my gear lever straight and my clutch lever straight. And um, yeah, I just kept it steady, didn't push too hard, just rode with a bunch and uh, came in fifth. So I'm happy with that. And now all the focus on to tomorrow. Many variables make a course unique. But on the final race day in the Gares, there's one thing on everyone's mind. The riverbeds here are some of the slickest on the entire West Tour. Like a tractionless black hole designed to separate man from machine. The main race on Sunday is uh, one of the slippiest races that I've ever done. Yeah, it's horrendous. When we walk the track, it kind of looks quite easy, but uh, it's actually deceptive. It's so slippery that uh, as soon as you stop momentum, it's very hard to get going. This place is just hell, you know, it's so difficult. Like, there's no traction, you just have to go from side of the river to the other side, like trying to find some grips and traction, some dirt. If the rocks look like a slick tire without no marks, it's more slippery because that, that tire don't have traction. You have to go with a super soft mousse 
really soft also with the super soft tire. You use a hard mousse and hard tire, it's impossible to go. To be honest, I don't think I'm at that stage yet where I can uh, look at a rock or look at an obstacle and, and see where's the grippiest place. You've just got to look for like the grooves, I guess, look where the tire will grip, but if it's just a sheet rock, you know, it's just, for me, just hit it and hope for the best. <laughs> Ultimately, what makes a great enduro rider isn't just speed, stamina or technique, it's attention to detail. It's knowing your environment and being the one who can put the pieces of the puzzle together. In the Gares, no one knew that better than Wade's teammate, Mario Roman. Well, Lagares is a special place because it's all about traction. The most important part is try to choose good lines and get grip where the other ones are not able to take grip. Just one minute behind Mario, Wade ensures a Sherco 1 2. Proof that a smaller manufacturer can go toe to toe with KTM and Husqvarna. Halfway through the first lap, I was like, I think I was down in six, and I was just like, you're not feeling it. But, anyways, I just try to push on, and uh, yeah, I was super happy at the end. Uh, everyone got tired, I managed just to keep that same rhythm. And, like I said, that riverbed was the make or break. Sadly, not every story in hard enduro has a happy ending. After one and a half excruciating laps under the intense Portuguese sun, Ib is too ill to continue, forcing him to retire. I had some time left, but the body wasn't working anymore. Uh, I couldn't even drive on the normal road, so I uh, stopped, started to ache a little in the, have a little headache, and uh, my neck and my stomach, from uh, the finish line at the first lap and to checkpoint 10, I was just doing it with will, <laughs> willpower. I couldn't finish it, for sure not. It's uh, not enough time for me, but uh, it's a little, uh, I'm a little uh, devastated that I can't go all the way. Next on West Diaries, hard enduro makes way for a classic as Johnny Walker and a loose band of British amateurs take on Le Trefla Lazarian AMV. You having fun? Uh, no. 